uh, kind of with, with my experience as a coach and, and uh, everything else. So um, vertical jump, how high can they jump? How powerful can they jump? Realize that the answer to can kids improve vertical jump before puberty really has to do with uh, when kids improve something to do with strength or power before puberty, it means they just got better at the movement, enhanced motor coordination. It's not so much that their muscles got bigger. It's not so much that the the power system, the, the anaerobic uh, system in their body got better. Uh, that's what would happen with like a teenager or an adult. Really what happens is the kids, they're either born, and yes, you can be born with better genetics. This is one of the things they're born, being able to do that. Mom and dad are both great jumpers. Or they just learn the mechanics. They practice it over and over and over again, and they get better at the movement. So let's wrap our heads around that before we go out, uh, buy every possible gadget there is, and we run our kids into the ground. Getting better at the movement is the number one thing. So that kind of frames everything. If you're a coach, then that would mean let's take out some of the things that are just exhausting the kids. Let's take out some of the things that um, are creating undue fatigue. Those aren't helping vertical jump. So what does? Well, I recommend four steps. If you, if you want your kids to be able to, to, to jump better, or really this is for any skill, but if you want to be able to jump better, I, I recommend four steps to look at to make it so that they do get better at this skill before puberty. And that's our, our greatest opportunity. Before we do that, let's talk about two terms that have kind of turned into marketing terms. A lot of parents ask about these terms, coaches, and, they, they, and those two terms are fast twitch muscle fiber and plyometrics. So fast twitch muscle fiber, they call it quick twitch, they call it fast twitch, they call it uh, type two muscle fiber, all these different things. And we've all heard that, well, yeah, people that are more explosive and stronger and people that can jump higher, they have a lot more of the fast twitch muscle fibers. And the thought is, well, if you do explosive training, if you do plyometrics and all these other things that you can convert uh, more muscle fibers within an athlete or a kid or, or whatever it is, you can convert more muscle fibers to those type two muscle fibers. Here's the thing, which that is, that is true, but a couple things prior to puberty, for one, here's something that we all have to embrace. Hey, I'm a parent. Uh, I, I envision my daughter as being, she's going to be the first uh, Harvard PhD to win an Olympic gold medal. I mean, that's, that's my thoughts of her. But in reality, um, what we pass down to our kids, the muscle fiber distribution that they have, uh, really genetics plays a huge role. And prior to puberty, it looks like we can't really do a lot of converting of the type one slow twitch muscle fiber that's really good at endurance. We can't really convert a lot of those uh, type one muscle fibers to type two. And by the way, most kids, even kids that have naturally genetically more of that type two, more of that explosive muscle fiber, before puberty, kids are primarily oxidative, which means that kids have a higher ratio of the slow twitch muscle fibers. But there are kids that have more fast twitch to start with. When we're training, when we're doing jump training, we're doing all those different things, we're not really converting those before puberty. Now, as we get to puberty, we can convert more uh, muscle fiber types. But prior to puberty, it looks like that's just not happening. So if someone says, hey, then I'm gonna give your kid all kinds of fast twitch muscle fibers, um, that's not true. So it's not really worth worrying about that. Again, it comes back to technique. Now, plyometrics, that's something that, that's been made, this mystique around it, this um, like it's some magic thing. So-and-so teaches plyometrics. Well, if you're your child is jumping in any way. It's, it's plyometrics, really plyometrics training. Uh, we, we pretty much stole it from the Russians back in the day, Soviet Russia. They started to use explosive training for explosive sports. And it started, Dr. Verkashensky started playing around with, okay, well, how can I create, if, if our athletes are trying to put force into the ground, how can we create this force into the ground in training? And he really was looking at people jumping off of boxes and experiencing that huge shock to the body and then jumping up off the ground. So they started using that. Uh, American coaches saw it and said, wow, this is really cool. They called it plyometrics and now it's become part of what we do. Honestly, it really comes down to plyometrics is, is jump training. If you're doing jumping, if, if you're going up in the air, coming down to the ground, absorbing that force and going back up into the air, that's plyometrics. So it's not some magic thing. Um, so just to understand, those two concepts are used to make things a little wonky. People, it's their marketing terms and, and they confuse a lot of parents. So that's what those ter two terms mean. So let's go on to what would four steps be if we want to build the ability to vertical jump? Because we can't do it overnight. You just can't. And we can't take an eight-year-old and make him dunk <laughs> a season. So here's how I'd recommend. First, 
if you're working with young athletes and they're before puberty, the first step is just playing with jumping. So uh, if you have a practice or anything, don't worry about going too crazy with, with really young kids. We're not teaching. We're giving them an opportunity to move more. We're giving them an opportunity to play with jumping, just to figure it out, just to say, okay, this how would I get from uh, this little agility dot to the other if I can't step in between? And let them just play with that idea. Let them get used to that. The only coaching thing we're really looking for is we're looking for, can they do this by leaving the ground with two feet at the same time? That's really what we're looking for. And that's the only thing we would coach. If, if kids can't leave the ground and land with both feet at the same time, that is a coordination problem. And we do need to work through that before we progress. If they go off of one foot, then the other foot, they're gonna have difficulty with almost, almost anything. So we'll just keep playing with it and keep cueing them and uh, jumping over things and jumping from things to things, just lots of playing with that. Second step, now that they got more comfortable with that, now it's time to really work on that, getting their body to understand that elasticity, that, okay, if I hit the ground, can my body then absorb that force and reapply it quickly? This is where things like jump rope are critical. Very important for one, jump rope is just an amazing uh, coordination activity. It's great for rhythm, it's great for so many things, but uh, they, they don't really do that so much anymore. Kids can't jump rope and it's such a great activity. For one, they have to leave both feet at the same time, but for two, they get a lot of practice with going down to the ground, coming up, going down to the ground, coming up, going down to the ground, coming up. At any age, if you wanna improve vertical jump, start doing things like jump rope. But it could, I mean, even things like jumping jacks, anything where they're just being elastic off the ground, learning how to redirect the force, coming down, going back up, as long as they're going off of both feet at the same time, get them used to that because that's gonna be an important part of the overall picture. Now, when I outline all these different things, these aren't saying that uh, they have to be done overnight. It might take years to develop these things. So now that you're doing all those, uh, we're, we're jump rope and we're doing all that, we've been playing with it, now it gets to a point where you can say, okay, now let's start coaching a little bit. Let's start seeing the actual vertical jump, that actual skill, what, what are the muscles involved? And this is where coaching really comes in because if kids can't, if kids don't understand a squat motion to do the right type of squat, if they're still folding at their spine and their chest faces the ground and they don't know how to use their upper body and we're having them jump on boxes and we think we're doing all this serious plyometrics training, there's going to be a breakdown in the chain and we're actually not helping them get better. So our next step, step three, would be to teach them how to squat even independently of jumping. Because being able to understand where their chest should be, how to, to, to get the most out of lowering their hips to the ground and coming up, using the right muscles. So many parents come to me and they talk about all the plyometrics they have their kids doing because their kids, they want their kids to be able to jump higher and blah, blah, blah. And they ask me, well, what else can I do? And I said, well, can they do a squat? Can they do a basic squat? And they can't. I've worked with hundreds of kids that supposedly have been through all these magic plyometric fast twitch programs and they can't even do a basic squat. So teaching them how to do a basic squat, going through the progressions for learning how to do a squat, they don't have to have a perfect squat, but they should understand how to shift their hips back, bend the knees at the right time, uh, keeping their chest up, all the basic tenets of a squat, teaching that. Because then the next step, step four, is gonna teach them how to go and use their upper body to jump and to land. So the way that looks is, can they learn how to throw their arms down on the way down while keeping their chest up and not caving in and then throw their arms up on the way up so that they get all that momentum moving up. And then, and here's the most important thing, can they land in a not straight leg position? Can they land in a position where they're absorbing the force and they can either stop there or they can reapply the force into the ground. And this is where we get into, that's the beginnings of deceleration training too. So getting them strong enough to decelerate is really important and a lot of coaches they just think how high can how high can we get athletes to jump just jump higher jump higher jump higher well if we don't work on landing a couple things are going to happen for one we're going to increase the likelihood of injury because that's very hard to control that force as they come to the ground most injuries are due to the fact that kids can't decelerate and quite frankly adults as well deceleration is where a lot of injuries happen so this is a great place to start deceleration training going through it, and if you uh, look at our, our different things, if you're a member of the Powerful Playground, if you're not, hey, check out Powerful Playground, but if you are, look at the one, two, three jumping drills, look at our vertical jump and our squat drills to teach that sequence of using the arms, jumping, and then landing. 
So those four steps, first playing with it, then elasticity, uh, then we're teaching how to squat, and then we're throwing the upper body into it. And then after that, once they have that down, then it makes sense to start loading them more and doing things like depth jumps and, and, and being even more strategic about how we put that together. But again, remember, they're only going to get better at that skill if they practice it correctly. So if we're doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jumps and we're just beating them into the ground and they can barely walk, that doesn't make any sense, quite frankly, at any age. But especially with young kids, nothing replaces their improvements in almost everything will come primarily from them learning how to do it right and practicing that way of doing it right a lot. So go through those four steps. You gotta have the patience. It's not, you can't, just because you want, uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's coming up now. If, if you want that Thanksgiving turkey cooked in 30 minutes, Good luck. You can't just turn up the heat all the way and all of a sudden the turkey gets cooked. You got to have patience. It takes time. And and with, with working with kids, it takes that patience. It takes time. You just have to know where they're at developmentally and take them through the sequences. So if you have questions or comments or anything, please post them right below, below this video. Make sure you're following us here uh, at Spider Fit Kids and check out the blog. In the blog, we go into detail on all this and, and we really want to help you out. And so have a great weekend. Uh, remember, the, the best thing we do with kids is help them be athletic and active for life. So get them out there. Be active this weekend. I'll see you soon.